All right, so um, I'm, I'm going to take a quick session on this. Like, I know audience here is very familiar with like why the containers came in, what the advantage they give over the VMs, or typically why people are so excited about what's coming with containers. So a quick recap on things. Um, containers give basically why the containers came on, came on board, right? Like modern applications are moving away from being a monolith to a microservices model which eventually let, you know, uh, instead of having a single large application, you have a bunch of microservices running in parallel, doing a specific job, interacting with each other, and ultimately making sure your, your, your goal of writing that application is done. Um, containers <coughs> are super efficient. Um, this, they, they, can, they can come in very fast. They can scale very fast. They can, they can get deployed very fast. So um, a whole lot of advantages you get with the container. Now, the important part when you talk about container is also you need to know that why applications are moving towards containers, right? Because applications want some kind of portability. Like environment is changing like crazy today. Um, there are so many operating environments coming in from, uh, from, from public clouds to private clouds to on-prem servers. You want your applications to keep moving from one environment to another environment if possible from similar type of cloud environment to another cloud type of cloud environment. But typically, the applications are written, they are, they are written for their native operating environment, right? So you, you want to start something, let's say, on, on a particular public cloud, and you basically started using the services from the public cloud, so you customize your application so that you can run extremely good on that public cloud. But now, when the time is, okay, hey, I need to move this application from this public cloud for whatever reasons, because I found a better alternative, and I want to go to somewhere else, I can't do that because I have customized my application too much for the public cloud. So basically, I'm getting a lock-in. So how, how typically you want to break this lock-in? Like, you, you want to break your application, as I talked about monolith into microservice. You have application define its environment. You want to have application control what the environment should be. You want to abstract out all the resources that application uses. Because by doing so, like typically what the software-defined storage world is bringing in, you do not want to call a resource as, OK, this is my compute. This is my storage. This is how my volume looks like. This is how my target looks like. You want to call out resources, what application, or maybe in a more like a humane form, where you can abstractly call, my application needs resource one and resource two. That could be a banana and an orange. How your banana maps to a resource, how your orange maps to a resource, leave it for the application to define. So um, have related services packaged into a single entry. That's extremely important when you have application broken down into multiple microservices. You want to package them together. So it means if one service has to fail over, your package needs to be aware of it. So it means if related components need to fail over, they need to fail over together. Um, and, far, and last but not the least, applications should be able to resume or recover from partial failures. Because now you have microservices. One service can fail. And then same service can start. The same service should be able to restart. An application should be able to bring the restarted service back into its sphere. <clears throat> so what typically happened when I, sorry, I'm going a little fast over here. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll try to make sure I get to the crux of the point that I'm trying to make. Um, so typically, when containers come in, they were, they were very difficult to handle because people have no idea how the container is going to work in. Then Docker came in. Docker made containers lifecycle super easy, super manageable. But the Docker, one thing that couldn't bring in is when applications start using containers, what will be the lifecycle management for applications? What will be the resource lifecycle management for the resources? So that's where Kubernetes did a great job. So they definitely are a container-centric platform. They orchestrate resources very well. They have a compute network and storage segmentation. And what basically they do is when your application wants to move away from one node to another node where they are hosted, they make sure the resources are also aware of it. So it means it gives tremendous power to the vendors now to know what the applications are doing, how the applications are floating in the universe of multiple containers, multiple apps, and how to react to it. Now, where, where do we fit in? So I'll, I'll skip this container, Kubernetes part part. But the most important part is uh, why Datera works very well with container applications. Like the important part, if you really notice, application is absolutely based on intents, like what we have been covering in this session. We want application defines its own performance. Application defines its protection. Application defines okay, how isolated the accesses should be. Application wants to define how the persistence should be. Do I want to keep the data forever, or I should just simply get rid of the data once the application is gone. So Datera is built grounds up 
for handling all these things. We let you define policies, we let you define intent in the way that you can, and you can labelize those. Once you labelize those, any of the container orchestration platform, you can go and define those labels along with your application. And that application passes these hints down to the resource provisioner, which is Deterra, and when we receive those hints, we know exactly how to react to them. So it basically gives us tremendous advantage um, that's how uh, resources should be handled when an application really requires that. So if you, if you really see the part of here, Datera also defines resources. So we do not call our resources, okay, hey, this is a volume and this is a target. We explicitly call resources as, okay, this is my pool, this is my policy, okay, this is where my storage resources are. When I talk about networking configuration, I do not talk networking configurations. I talk about, like, this is my IP pool, this is my access mechanism. When I talk about how the application footprint should be, the manifests are defined as templates, which are basically a collection of all these things. So what that, helps you giving is you basically choose your own difficulty level. Uh, if I'm an admin, I choose to decide, okay, how complicated I want my life to be. If I'm happy with what the system has defined, I can literally use it as is. If I say, no, you know, you have defined 10 things out of in the template, I don't like one thing, but I like other nine things. Oh, I let you define, I let you over, over, overwrite one particular part of the template by letting you define localized control in a tenant. So you choose your complexity level. If you want to play an advanced role, you can define everything whatsoever you want. You want to play a very simple basic role, you can just simply go ahead and choose whatever is available to you. That's great power. But the fundamentally important thing is containers are very new. They are dangerous if you don't know how to use them. If you have a container, or if you use something like in Kubernetes stateful set, and unfortunately you start with like the two replica of MySQL, and suddenly you said, oops, I made a mistake and I added two extra zeros. Now instead of 10 instances of this, you're running 1,000 instances in your system. So what would you do? Would you let your whole system break down? No, we have safeguards. So what we can do, we let you define the upper limits from the performance and upper limits from Quora point of view. So even if an explosion happens, your system is protected against not overreaching what it should do, what it should not do. So other applications which are running in the system are not dying because they do not have any performance. So noisy neighborhood, great problem to solve in container world. We take care of that. You do not know whether your data written by the application is going to be protected or not. We have default snapshot schedules. You can just define once for all in your top level tenant. Any application come in, they forgot to define their own data protection mechanism, that system kicks in. It automatically takes a schedule. You can tune it. Every tenant can tune it. So container world comes with a lot of namespaces where they define, okay, hey, what is the boundary of my application to run? And these same namespaces are mapped within the Datera world in form of tenants. So tenants give you extreme, extremely fine-defined control over how your application environment should be, where you should float in, and what resources do you have access to. Great stuff. And very, very interesting part is, if in the container world, once, since they are heavily optimized for compute placement, like scheduling point of view, once the resources are defined and the applications are put in, they do not let you touch it, because schedulers are based on what you have provisioned. But by using Jatera underneath, since we are so heavily built on templates and policies, even if you have a massive deployment burning and your container platform or ecosystem is not letting you touch those, we let you define that. So you can go to the template and you can tweak in a knob. It'll be applied right away under the hood into the ecosystem platform as well, without platform being interfering into it. So these are great, great advantages of using Datera with it. I'm, I'm really sorry like we didn't have much time to go through a lot and a lot of details. Uh, I would love to have another session and maybe we'll point you to some other video some point in time. But since everything is changing in this world, and since we are constantly reacting to those changes, that brings Datera into a prime position where we, we are making a technology which is ready to use today, and I'm very sure if you define one thing from a template and manifest point of view, you can future-proof your, your deployments. So even if technology changes, we'll be able to do it. Thank you.